Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number two of Project Enterprise, the Project Alexandria spin-off that's going to focus on just the construction of a space shuttle. I was working on my latest Alexandria episode, but there were technical difficulties with my computer, including, but not limited to, the microphone dying. So this is a new microphone. As the end of the week drew near, it was clear that I would not finish the episode in time for a Monday release. So I set it aside for a couple of hours and started working on this. We're going to be rescaling my space shuttle for the launches that are coming up in about 17 to 20 years on the regular show. I can at least provide you with a short update on my shuttle progress if I can't give you a full Alexandria episode. A full Alexandria for 1960 will ear next week instead. We'll start off with how part scaling even works in KSP, and for that I'm going to have to go through all of the part files. This is the CSS mod that I've got here, all the directories for it, in my special 090 installation of KSP that I'll be using just for this space shuttle here. So we go through and we grab all the part files one by one, loading them into my favorite text editor. I need to show exactly how to scale the different things. We'll start off by looking at the model. In some situations, you're going to see a model section where the scale could be specified. If it's not here, then it's assumed to be 111. When it is specified like this, it can make any of the XYZ coordinates larger. In this case, we have 1.5, so it's one and a half times as big as it would be if there were nothing here at all. After you've scaled the individual part, then you can scale the whole thing up and down using this one. 1 1.5 will scale the model again. The original model itself has a scale. That's defined by the model maker. And finally, there can be a rescale factor right here. If this isn't specified and this isn't specified, either of these would be one by default. This is still one. So even though it's specified, it didn't need to be because it's one. When you do specify a rescale factor, that's going to affect all the, not only the scale of it, but all of these nodes as well. This is the only one that affects the nodes too. So once you have your node positions, these are the X, Y, Z of the node position. This is the X, Y, Z of the direction of the node. And this right here is the size of that node. And these are all of the attachment points. These will scale relative to whatever this number is. And that's the only way to rescale all these values. And finally, if you're using tweak scale, you're going to have a module in your part like this, where it'll say name equals tweak scale, and then it'll specify a type of scaling. It might say free scale. It might say scale type is stack. It might say surface. There may be a default scale, like this one right here is a one. Well, tweak scale modifies the rescale factor that we were just looking at over in this file, and it changes this value it essentially overrides it with whatever tweak scale has come up with. So for starters, I'm trying to normalize all of the parts of the CSS mod back to their uh, base value so that nothing is modifying them at all. So that's why I have here at the model section, I wanna set the scale to 111 for every single part that starts with CSS or ASA port. This is an or bar right here, and this means any character. So this would represent CSS followed by any characters or uh, this specific part, the APA sport, or anything that starts with Aries and so on. Then down here, I'm saying that I want the scale to be one and the rescale to be one. Then if there's any tweak scale module on it, I'm taking it off and attaching my own module. By saying free scale, this is allowing me to size the parts to exactly how big I need them to be. And then I'll come back later and I'll change the rescale factor to exactly what I have determined is the correct size to make the real solar system sizes show up that the, the way that they should be based on whatever my research says is the proper size for all the parts by going on the wikis and just looking them up. And that's what comes next. So going out to wikis and just Googling sizes for shuttle stuff, I've been able to pull up these different schematics that show dimensions and angles and size of the SRB, size of the external tank and that sort of thing. And that lets me go back into the game and use my panels to measure method. 
Using my usual method of measuring things, I have grabbed some of the one by one plates and I've stacked them up to see how long certain things are here. You can see this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half or so. Well, that is 11 and a half long right now. That's the cargo bay. It is supposed to be 60 feet long. Right now, it's probably about 38 feet long. So I'm going to have to scale that up. The same goes for the boosters over here. You can see I started measuring them and I believe I've laid out enough of these little one by one plates to show how tall that booster should be. You can see it, it barely goes past the bottom of it here. So it's pretty good at the bottom, but at the top, we are way short. It needs to go at least up to there. So there's quite a bit of scaling that needs to go into this now. Another thing I've done today is made a custom category for this, opened this up, made a special category, and then one by one moved all the CSS parts into it so that I can get an easier menu when I wanna grab new parts and pull them out here and put it all together. The strategy for rescaling each part will essentially be the exact same across all of them, so I'll just show this one. I take the cargo bay and then I line up a plate so that we can see the top of it. Then put enough one by one plates until it gets to the right length and then another little piece sticking out so I can see the bottom. So essentially I have a ruler now. After that we use tweak scale to get it up to the proper size and then take the number out of the tweak scale user interface. That's the rescale factor we'll want to use. And we take that number back into the config file. We can put that in place of the rescale factor and then we can take out the tweak scale module. Once all the part files have been opened up in my favorite text editor here, I can go back through them one by one and grab the names of the parts so that I can go to my custom file that I've created and start putting in the special part sections that will allow me to change all these values one by one. For example, you can see me here making the engine. We take the name of the part, put it in the at part section, then go back through and specify whatever things I'm going to change like the title or the mass, the thrust value, what kind of fuel it uses, the specific impulse values, and so on. So let's just fast forward ahead here to the next step, which is to find out what needs to go on all of these lines. What is the mass value? What is the thrust? What is the ISP? And for that, we're going back out to the wiki again. The wiki is a good place to start, so we'll take the numbers from there, but you have to check a few sources because sometimes the numbers don't always match up. From here, we're going to grab the thrust values and the ISP values and just transpose them back into the document in the appropriate locations. Later, we'll cross-reference the values with things that we find on other similar websites like Astronautics, which is a really good one. This whole process will then just repeat for each of the remaining parts. We'll do the crew cabin today, we'll do the engines, the solid boosters, the external tank. A lot of the stuff won't be set correctly for mass values yet, but at least we can get the sizing right. Now, if you don't remember to set all of your scale and rescale factors to one before you get started, then you might find this bug right here where it looked fine when I brought it out initially, but then after reverting, the crew cabin got really, really small. That gets fixed by simply going back to that config file and making sure that you do have a scale equals one and rescale factor equals one for all of your parts by default. Well, while we had it out here, I had originally read that there might be a problem with the wheels, but it looks like whoever's making this mod has fixed the wheels because they seem to be rolling just fine for me. So I took it for a spin through the middle of my base. I'm also interested at this point to see how much work I'm going to have to do to make it work with Ferrum Aerospace. So I did take a little bit of a look at those stats. I pulled up the center of mass value and the center of lift value. It looks like they're pretty far off. So we'll have to come back in another episode to work on that as well. I managed to find this interesting bug when I came back one time, went back to the SPH and we were outside it looking in. Well, obviously there's a lot of work still to do, but the scaling is almost done. Next time on Project Enterprise, we'll work 
on getting those mass values all set up and getting the consumables like the fuel and any life support that we're going to need inside. We'll get that all set up. That's what we'll do then. Also this coming week will be to finish the next Project Alexandria, which will air next Monday. So until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts.